All right, I think objectively, we can all say that NVIDIA is the creme de la creme when it comes to GPUs and AI accelerator technology, and they need to keep that lead because Intel and AMD aren't always going to be in the back of the pack. There's more parity, and we as consumers want that parity. We want to make sure there's competition that drives price down and we have redundancies in our supply chain. We can't just rely on one. Now, NVIDIA doesn't care. They need to make the most profit as possible. So how are they going to do that? by putting things like this project digits in the hands of individuals, keeping us on the platform, learning the platform, getting comfortable with it, because that translates to the data center, to cloud compute, because we're just familiar with the technology, but we need it. So at CES 2025, they talked about project digits, this very technology novel leading industry of their Grace Blackwell technology. So you got a Blackwell GPU, you have a gray cpu i think there's a hundred yeah 128 gigabytes of vram and that really differs from a more recent announcement of jetson orin where there was what i didn't find to be that much of memory available and i think this is more hobbyist this is more developer centric and it's three grand apparently and why like three grand that, that's insane like if i go to uh amazon for example and i search like an nvidia uh, 4090 uh, we're going to see a price of 2500 I don't think that's correct, but it's very expensive. It's north of 2500 for the most part and can even go much higher. And this with only or with 128 gig versus this, a 4090 or the 3090 I have in my machine learning rig that I use to develop things has only 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So what's the catch? So first off, let's just quickly recap why GPUs. All of these computations, especially within natural language processing and LLMs, needs to be done with GPUs. CPUs are serial processing, GPUs are parallel processing, and that's why NVIDIA holds the lead. It's their CUDA platform. They call it the Moat. And I went over this in a different, um, yeah, this one, in a different video, but that's what it is. All the support, all the AI models, things like PyTorch, for example, that drive a lot of this generative AI needs CUDA, is supported by CUDA because that is the optimization of all the parallelized computations. And why AMD isn't up there, it's because here, out of the box experience, out of the box experience for NVIDIA is better. Uh, NVIDIA or AMD needs more support. A lot of the AMD right here, many of the AMD libraries are forks of NVIDIA AI libraries leading to suboptimal outcomes and compat compatibility issues. So that's why there's the bias towards NVIDIA. But like I said before, we can't expect that to always be the case or NVIDIA can't. And they want their market share, their 3 trillion market cap. They want to maintain that lead. And again, putting things like this in the hands of developers gets that for them. But again, that three grand, Project Digits will be available in May to NVIDIA and top partners starting at three grand. It's this. A lot of their systems don't necessarily come with like a open availability to do development on. They have this NVIDIA AI. So this allows developers to prototype AI on Project Digits and then scale on cloud data infrastructure using the same Grace Blackwell architecture using NVIDIA AI Enterprise. That requires licensing. But why would you want to pay additional to use something like that? Again, it's customer user experience. It's this development. Being able to build agentic AI app applications, users can harness NVIDIA blueprints and NVIDIA NIM microservices. What do they call it? Micro, because that's neural inference microservices, microservices. A anyway, <laughs> which are available for research, development, and testing. So if you're unfamiliar, if you're going to build out any sort of AI infrastructure, uh, there's many, many layers to it. And you build out these containers and there's a whole ML ops of seeing how optimized it is. And there, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the back end. NVIDIA a Enterprise intends to make that easier to develop and deploy for individuals. And that's kind of what they're going towards. But what does that create? That creates this closed ecosystem because you're building on NVIDIA uh, hardware, you're building on NVIDIA software, and you're kind of locked in. But there's that trade-off, right? That you don't have to do all the support and all the headache stuff to keep things because a lot of individuals who are the end users of these AI models, 
just just want to use it. They don't care about the back end stuff. So a lot of my day to day when I work in my actual job is discussing with data center engineers, data scientists and the end users, which are in their line of business to really care about each other because it all has to work in synergy. There's budgets and there's support that all needs to be done. And again, NVIDIA Enterprise aims to make that much simpler with things like their inference microservices, where it's just kind of an out of the box ex experience. So by releasing things where individuals can develop on a small little AI supercomputer with 128 gigabytes of memory, you're talking 200 billion parameter models, much larger. Like I'm only comfortable with that thing behind me on the 3090i running at most, maybe an uh, a llama, o llama optimized 7 billion parameter model, because then there becomes this energy trade off with tokens per second and output. But this thing, this thing just looks like it's gonna be a little beast just sitting right there in this beautiful little case that people are fascinated with. If you ever go into a data center and see the NVIDIA GPUs sitting in there, it's got like this same little case on it and it just stands out. I mean, it's good. If you're going to pay this much for infrastructure, you might as well have it look pretty. So I like where NVIDIA is going. Just understand that with that $3,000 price point, which seems incredibly low for the power that you're getting, there comes a catch where you're gonna to have to have subscriptions to things like NVIDIA AI Enterprise to use the backend support software, but the trade-off is ease of deployment.